This is pretty interesting. A brand new feature in Power BI called User Defined Functions. So it's a DAX thing to help you reuse patterns in formulas. So I'll do two examples to show you how it works. It's a preview feature. So you do have to turn this on via File, Options and Settings, Options, Preview Features, tick the box, don't use this in real world yet. But essentially what it does is allows you to set patterns, set a DAX pattern that you want to use, and then you can pass variables into that rather than having to rewrite the formulas over and over again. So here's the general construct. Uh, you, you have to write it in the DAX query view or the, or the Tyndall view. You define the function, okay? So that's the function name. You call it whatever you want. Let's call it fn adding, okay? And I'm just gonna put in a couple of parameters, a and b, okay? And then my function is actually gonna be a plus b. Okay, great. And then I can evaluate this, I can test it. So this is my gonna be called my fn adding. See, it pops up here. I like to put fn in front of my functions. You know, I'm going to use that pattern so it really pops out to people that it's a function. Um, and then I just want to put, I don't know, 10 and 20. So when I run this and test it, there you go, it gives me 30 as the output. Okay, bit of a basic example just to get you familiar with the concept. Not very useful, but I'll show you a useful examples now. Okay, so how do you create one of these from scratch? Well, hopefully at some point, this may work for you already when you're watching this, is when you right click on this, I want it to say, define a function. But what I really want, what you can do here, if you've already written one, you can say, define a new function, and this pops up. So I'm in the DAX query view here, okay? So let me just show you an example of this in action and how it can help. So if I go back to the report view, and I'll start with this conditional formatting example, okay? So I've got conditional formatting on a measure here to give me a red arrow if it's, you know, this is power usage from my house. If the power's usage is up on last year, red. Up on last year, red. Down on last year, green. Okay, so I've added conditional formatting. I've also got a totally different sort of measure that I'm, I'm analyzing here, and I want the same rules to apply. Okay, so I could apply conditional formatting to a measure over and over again, but all I've done here is, let me show you this one. I've written a function called conditional formatting rule. And all that function says, I'll show you in a second, is if it's less than zero, red, positive, if it's more than zero, green, and if it's neutral, gray, okay? So then if I'm chopping and changing, so that's the usage prior year, if I'm clicking on this, you can see all the greens. If I'm clicking on this, you can see all the reds. Same rule applies here. So the demo difference, so CF demo difference, okay, same function, okay, demo difference. So let me show you what that looks like. And also if I click on here, okay, that goes one, because I've used the same conditional formatting rules and all these things. So if I go back to here, and I go to my conditional formatting rule, quick queries, define and evaluate. So this is what I wrote, define function, Okay, that's how you start off. What do you want it to call it? Equals, and then I've passed it a measure. Okay, and then the equals sign in the bracket. And then I've written whatever I want my calculation to be. I've used vars to split this out. If the measure is less than zero, do that. If the measure is greater than zero, do this. Okay, return result. And then I could say, okay, well, I'd like to use blue instead of green. So I'm just gonna paste that in there. Okay, and if I click update model with changes, update model, and I go back to my report view, see blues, blues, okay. And if I click on this, sort of a light blue, if I click on that, the blue. So it's basically changing it in one place and it affects everything. Another example, okay, lifetime to date. Maybe I've got my lifetime to date measure. This maybe was my uh, original lifetime to date measure for usage in kilowatt hours in my house. So I'm doing this sort of pattern, but then I wanna do another one for power generation for my solar panels year to, 
lifetime to date and another one for something else life to date. So I'm just copying this logic. It's the same pattern over and over again. So what I've done instead is, okay, usage lifetime to date. And I can just come in here, okay, and go usage lifetime to date using UDF, give it a tick. And I come across here and I've got this growing lifetime to date pattern, okay? So let me just show you the wrong version, okay, as well. I wanna show you this that didn't work. When I first tried this, this didn't work. So if I tick this, I come across here a little bit. This is 94, this is 410, which is the actual usage for the month. This is the 449, which is the usage for the month. This isn't the cumulative figure. So let me just show you this to help explain something. If I go back into DAX query view and I go to the wrong one, right click, quick queries, define and evaluate. Okay. This is what I did. I said, here's my function. Here's my measure that I'm passing in as a variable, essentially. Do the filter all, okay. But it doesn't work because of a setting. There's a the default setting is to turn this into values, a bit like using a variable if you're the var function. Once you've set that, nothing else can change the context. Okay, it, it's sort of it's it's fixed. So let me show you what you have to do to make it work. Okay, if I come in here, define and evaluate this bit. This is the magic bit. This is what tells it to act. Let, let this input be influenced by subsequent filter context changes. So let it be impacted by calculate. So this expression bit, semicolon, or sorry, colon expression, if you don't want it to be to change, if you want it to be fixed, then you can use val. But by default, if you leave it off, it is val. This is referred to as parameter mode. Um, caught me out. Uh, so you need to add that if you want a measure to, to change, because I want it to be changed by this, okay, by the calculate. And with these, it's great because rather than having to do a separate, um, you know, measure for usage and then another one for generation, I can just go, okay, here's my generation lifetime to date just by passing that in. Now it's a simple example, but you can imagine longer formulas that people use for, you know, more complex things, being able to reuse that over and over again. And that function, you know, you have to create it in DAX query view. Um, you can do it in the Tyndall view as well, if you've got that enabled, if that's on. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting concept. And I'm sure people will come up with hundreds of different patterns and things like this that you'll be able to use as well. Just a couple of little warnings as well. So um, if you are making references inside your UDF to something like, let's say the calendar table, and I change the name of the calendar table or one of the columns, my UDF breaks. It's not like measures where the Power BI is clever enough to change the syntax. So you've got to be careful about that to start with. Um, there is no button currently to create it. You have to actually write that bit of code. Hopefully that right click option appears for, for brand new measures, uh, brand new functions. Um, you can't do this in the service. Um, you can't hide the functions in, in the model and you can't put them in display folders or anything like that currently. So, but really good for a preview feature to start playing around with and seeing what scenarios and I'm sure there's going to be proliferation of these. And also, check out in the description a link to my Power BI Essentials training course, available now. So, first look at this. I, I've literally not used it in real life yet, but I can see some pretty good use cases. Um, what use cases have you ha do you have? Do, are there some patterns um, that you'll use? People could find that really useful if you post that in the comments. And hope you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you in the next video.